Warning, this video contains scenes of animals being dispatched in the UK using legal limit air rifles. Do not watch if you may be offended. Go and watch Charlie Bit My Finger instead. Morning, afternoon, evening, night, whatever it is where you are. Hope you're all okay. Um, I'm out on a lovely Saturday, uh, September morning. A little bit of a breeze. Obviously, I'm on the farm, as you can see. Uh, bought the Rapid 20 cal. Um, you may notice it's now sporting a 280 bottle. Um, that's because it's now regulated. Um, Steve at one, HW100 Tuning has developed his own regulators, valves, quick fills, gauges, um, which will be coming to market very soon. This is fitted with uh, the regulator, set to about 80 bar, 85 bar. Um, incredible number of shots. The valves made from a uh, material called Peak, which is a really, really hard plastic. Um, incredibly efficient. Um, I did a 220 bar fill on a 280 bottle down to around about 80 bar indicated. And um, I got 385 shots from a fill on a 280 bottle. That's with the 19 inch barrel, which is slightly more efficient. That's just crazy number of shots. Um, so really good stuff uh, coming to market very soon. Keep an eye on his website, hw100tunein.co.uk. Um, it's also fitted with a little, you probably can't see it there, but I'll show you in the photograph, um, a little um, pre-chamber 1cc. That's going to be available as well. Um, just helps the gun work better and breathe better. Um, beautiful machining on the parts absolutely superb quality everything's handmade by him um, so uh, if you need to regulate or you'd like to regulate your rapid um, this is a mark 1 1998 gun um, and the regulator and the quick fill just screw straight in because they're made to exactly the same uh, dimensions as the original theoban um, so they needed no alteration to the block to regulate it because the reg depth is shorter than the chamber in the, in the uh, rapid block. Um, so you just screw it in, set your pressure um, and away you go. Absolutely superb bit of kit. Um, I got, when I was on the range, um, I started to get down to about 120 bar. So I put the chronograph on, the FX chrono and it still did 90 shots down to 80 bar. Um, and um, they were all like 10, 12 feet per second variation across the whole string. It was, it was unbelievable. That's a pellet straight from the tin as well. That's well worth doing. So say keep an eye on his website and um, there'll be details on there soon of all that. Um, also using the Pard uh, LRF, superb bit of kit, which we all know and love. Um, use this on all my pre-charge now just swap it between the guns because it remembers five different guns zeros so it's just easy to swap um, other than that excuse the scruffy bottle um, as a gift for my friend Stan who had a spare one um, um, to be honest in the farm I probably won't even bother spraying it I was thinking about doing it but I'm leaning it on gate posts and things like that so I'll sacrifice the bottle and not the stock um, okay we'll see how I get on um, it's very, very quiet actually this morning. Not a lot uh, around. Hopefully that'll change. Um, but we'll see how we go. Uh, I'd just like to say a big thanks to the people at Infrared um, who have sent me their um, superb um, <laughs> thermal spotter um, that connects to a phone um, and you use it to. Um, to obviously see in the dark. I'll be on my next rabbit video. I'll put a link to Andy's uh, video, a &M Bushcraft and Hunting, uh, and link in the description below for that review, because um, he always does great reviews on kit. But I'll be using that in the next rabbit video, which hopefully won't be too long. Okay, I'll uh, speak to you soon and see how we do. Well, it wasn't long. As soon as I walked down uh, from where I was filming that, looked up to my right, there's a feral pigeon on the roof. So we'll take him for starters. Down into the empty pen he goes. Go down and pick him up in a minute. So I had a quick wander down into the barn. 
Um, now this, if you watched one of the HW80 videos, I actually took a, a juvenile from this very spot. Um, but this guy, clearly staying where he is, so I can't get a shot on him. Um, because of the roof behind, he's not he's not stood in front of any steels, so I don't want to put a hole through the roof. So I shift myself around, try and get pet position on him, but he's sat halfway between two steel bars, so I can't get on him. Um, but when I actually look up, realise that he stood guard in his missus, who sat on the nest. Um, so. I can't get a clean shot on her either, and I'm not going to shoot a uh, female and have two chicks starve to death because that's not what we're here for, is it? So I'll get them next time. So back up to the sheds, get in position on the fence, front of the empty pen, see what we can do. Straight up this jack door, just about at zero, a little bit for wind, down he goes didn't notice that one though in the red circle and he saw it when I reviewed the video to make this completely missed that literally just notice outside there's a uh, feral up on the roof close to me keeping an eye on me so didn't have time to focus just took it where I was stood and then uh, swung back round spotted another one on the fence in the pens down he drops. It's a great height to shoot at stud because you're over the top of all the cattle. There weren't any cattle in the one hour stud in front of, which helps because they're always poking their noses through the fence. Hang around for a bit longer. Some more jackdaws in. Jackdaws seem to be the major problem here more than anything really. Down he drops can see the cattle below walking around everything's going over their heads no, no problem there another jackdaw on the uh, on the railing not quick enough there though snooze you lose and all that maybe this is one of them or is the same one to come back up No problem that time though. So it, well, if it was him, he did miss his chance to get out. This one on the back rail, 47 yards. A little bit for the wind. And down he drops. And then behind him, just happened to spot a woody in the tree. Pretty good camouflage really. I can still see him there. You can see a bit of a breeze, so I'm giving it a bit of holding to the right. And down he goes nice and clean. Wander back down to where the car is. Spot another feral on the roof. Seems to be a lot of ferals around the farm these days. A lot more than when I first started to shoot here. Drops down straight on top of where the other one was at the start. And then on the same roof. poking his nosy head over the top another one 30 yards half a mil dot straight between his shoulder blades his mate coming in there to see what's going on and this is on top of the feed pen um, another feral bit for the wind again slight right to left breeze Leave him up there for the buzzard. This one, just I'm just peeking over the top of the fence on tiptoes, 50 yards, which is a mill dot. If he just holds his head still, down he goes, back of the head. And the last two. This one at a real distance, 
but if you know your kit and you practice, 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 you can do your bit with it. Just happened to look round to my left, see another one sat on the wall. 50 yards, a mill dot, and it's all over. Not a bad morning's work there. And the old rapid. Right, if you enjoyed that, like, subscribe and share. And until next time, take care. Bye for now.